Welcome, ladies, to your 9.30 Zoom Fit Club for Women workout. I'm so happy that you're here. Let's go ahead and get started with our warm-up. We're going to start with a lateral side to side. Step, meet, step, meet. It's just the next workout days. will begin in 60 seconds. Please proceed to a station. It is just a few days until the holiday. I'm so proud that you all are here instead of on your couches with a big old cup of eggnog. Not that that's bad, but you do this first. <laughs> and then you go get your eggnog. Arms at 90 degrees. And we're going to open, close, open, close. Little bit of an opening through the chest. Exploring our range of motion today. So we do want to make sure that we're nice to our shoulders. We're not flinging. So lots and lots of control. And if a high elbow like this isn't the best thing for your shoulder today, you can always bring it down a little bit. You also don't have to go quite as wide. You can keep it narrow. Good. For four, for three, for two, and one. We're going to stand on one foot with the other leg tapped. Hand on that hip up to our 90 degrees. We're going to come across and then open. Squeezing those abs. We're trying to get one rib to the opposite hip. <sighs> Getting that diagonal muscle activation. As well as working a little bit of our stability. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Beautiful. If you can, come up and hold for a hot second and challenge your balance. Stop exercise. Good. Let's do one more. And then we're going to go to a high knee during this little break. And then for the next set, we'll do the other side. But as you're doing your high knees, you're trying to access those lower abdominals. The button is in. Begin set two. Beautiful. Three, two, one. Let's go ahead and bring the other toe down to the floor. Hand on that hip. 90 degree arm and across. Beautiful. Now you notice I'm not really squeezing that elbow in necessarily. I'm not closing off my chest. I want you to imagine like you're trying to get your armpit to your knee so that the movement is coming less from the arm itself, a little bit more from the actual rib cage rotating. My goodness, look how many people we have on the call today. Oh, exercise. Three, two, one, and into a high knee once again. Nice, soft landings, always a good idea. Now our equipment today is gonna to be pretty simple. It's just gonna be hand weights and a mat. We are going to be doing wall sits in just a moment. So make sure there's a space on the wall that you can use. Three, two, one, let's go into a hamstring curl. Bringing that heel straight up the back of that leg. We wanna avoid any flaring. <sighs> Getting that breath going. It is chilly outside, so we're getting that core temperature up. Hands forward, palms facing up, and squeeze. Beautiful. I hope everybody is Stop. having a Everybody's nice holiday done. season so far. <sighs> Maybe you're making cookies, finding creative ways to spend time with your families. Now I will say, my oven is broken Begin set four. and has been for a month, which means no cookies in our house, which is possibly a good thing. I don't know. I think it's terrible. <laughs> Three, two, one. Let's come to stillness, hands up. One, two, one, two. We're gonna do a little rapid fire jabs. Keeping those wrists nice and straight. We wanna make sure that we recoil. Sometimes I see this where people kind of leave their fists out Imagine like you're punching a punching bag. You wouldn't punch a punching bag and then leave your fist there. So one, two, one, two. Exercise and Ooh, to the next stage. let's go to that wall. So back against the wall. Oops, my goodness. Walk those feet out and we'll come on down. Making sure that the heels are directly underneath the ankles or maybe even a little farther away. Begin set one. Essentially what we don't want those kneecaps to push forward. You should be able to wiggle your toes a little bit at any given time. Lower back is against the wall, core is nice and tight. 
And yeah, we're just gonna hang out and breathe. I did some interval running right before I came down to teach. I need to stop doing that. So then I get really breathless and rosy. Beautiful. Should start to so feel a little fun. bit of heat build up in your thighs. Now, now is technically the break. I kind of only want you to take the break if you have to. So keep going if you can. I'm trying to see as much as I can. Begin so set cameras. two. Ooh, set two. Can you drop a little lower? We're getting our challenge from depth. Notice we don't have any weights. If your knees can't tolerate low depth, that is okay. It's totally fine. Just do what you can do. And we're getting that nice burn build up in those thighs. If your knees are healthy today, I'm gonna to provide a progression for you for sets three and four. I'll show you in just a moment. Stop. Ooh, there you go. Come on up, take a little break. I always like to do a couple of butt kickers here. It's a little dynamic stretch for those quads. All right, sets three and four. If your knees are healthy, we're going to do a marching wall sit. Now I know you can't quite see my feet. Begin set three. So just take a look at my knees. You're going to start with your feet all the way together, nice and snug, okay? Come down into your wall sit. Weight goes into your heels. Now, you're going to keep your core incredibly tight as you lift one knee up off the floor. Slowly replace it, and then the other knee. Now, if for whatever reason this bothers your knees, your back, if you feel like you're, you know, maybe you're on a slippery surface and you feel like being on one foot isn't stable enough, you do not have to do this. Right. Now, one thing that's gonna to want to happen is as you shift your weight from one foot to the other, you're gonna to wanna to sit into those hips. Now, your goal is to keep your spine Begin set four. as stable and as stacked as possible while you march. Soft landings, please. I see this a lot where people slam their foot down. You should float back down to the floor like the feather in the beginning of Forrest Gump. Float it down. Weight in those heels. Can you get a little lower? Last few seconds. And yes, I did make you work through the break. Ooh, stop exercise. There it is. Come up slowly. Very good. Give me a few butt kickers. We're going to come on down to the mat. Now, if you have sensitive shoulders, just a warning, we are going to go into a side plank now. So if a regular plank works better for you, go ahead and hold that. Begin set one. I'm going to show the modified version first. Lower knee is bent, top knee is straight. You're going to come on up and hold. Now here's a couple things I see a lot. A lot of times people's knees will be way forward and they'll kind of try to come up like this or they'll be hinging. What you want is that thigh to be in line with the rest of the body. It should be one straight line all the way down and hold. Now if your shoulders aren't really feeling pain but maybe they feel a little weak, Stop. you That's can. Nice. We're going to go ahead and do two seconds. That's on the same side, just for efficiency. If you need to switch, you can, but I'm gonna stay on the same side. This is a little bit of a modification for a side plank on the knee here. You'll come up, hold, Begin set two. come down for a second, take a breath, come up again. And here, we will start to build strength in that lower oblique and that shoulder so that you can try to push your endurance eventually. This is one really nice way to work up. Now, if you're feeling really strong and you want to go into that full side plank, you're more than welcome to. You'll notice I have my feet stacked. That's one totally legitimate way to do a side plank. The other way is a staggered foot. So one kind of in front of the other. Go ahead and switch sides if you haven't already. We're approaching set three. 
Now for me, it's sometimes if I have like a sideways pressure on my knee like this, it can feel the Three. If that's you, keep it stacked. You can also, if you like, there's so many different ways to do this. If you wanted to do your modified side plank, and you're like, oh, that feels kind of weird being on the side of my knee like that, you can try bending both knees. And if just holding it feels kind of boring, you can give me little dips, just dipping the hips down an inch and then back to center, not higher than center, please. Stop exercise. Good, take a break if you need to. Very important to hear that the belly button is pulled in and that there is a little bit of a squeeze of the glutes in the back. Working the whole core front and back here. And you should, working the shoulder, yes, you should feel it in the it shoulder, but you forward. should also feel it in the lower oblique, meaning the muscle that runs up and down the side of the waist. Good. This is set four. At the end of set four, we're gonna turn over onto our backs. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to full, because I want to. The other day I did these with my feet in the TRX. Not to brag, but I'm totally bragging. <laughs> I'm proud of it because I was really sore the next day. Stop exercise. Ooh, to beautiful. Let's go ahead and turn over onto our backs. We're going to go into a bridge. So I'm going to have you start with your feet all the way together. Nice and snug. You're going to come on up into a bridge as soon as you get comfortable. And just hold it for the moment. Begin set one. Now we're going to work endurance bridges. A lot of times when you're at the gym, we find ways to make this harder. You know, we put your feet on an unstable surface or something similar. Here with minimal equipment, we're going to get to that fatigue through endurance. So we're starting with isometric. Isometric meaning that you're holding a muscle contraction without movement for an extended period of time. Your belly button should be pulled in and your glutes are squeezed hard. Every inch of height you're getting in your hips is coming from that buoy. Beautiful. Now set two, we're gonna add a range of motion. You're gonna drop into just barely, boop, tap the mat, then you're gonna squeeze your glutes and slowly come back up. Now this Again, set two is moving real slow. And when I say slow, I mean like, imagine, you know, Amber dripping from a tree, slow. So when you tap the mat, you are not releasing your hips down. So we're not like relaxing. Whew. You wanna make sure that you just barely tap, we're holding that muscle contraction and then we squeeze. Wonderful. If you come up on the higher side and your back doesn't like it for whatever reason, Stop. just don't come up quite so high. Very good. All right. now. Here, that's the end of set two. You can take a break only if you need to. I'm going to keep going. Good. All right. All right. Now I'm going to pull my hands up just so you can see. Begin set three. Set three and four. We're doing a march. So we're going to bring that knee up slowly, lower it down. Very similar to the wall sit march. Slow, soft landings. Remember that forest gump feather. That's how soft and nice and gentle you want to land. Now, as we move into our march, we're transitioning our weight from one leg to the other, and we should start to feel the work transition a little bit less from the booty and more into the hamstring. Soft exercise. Good. That's set three. Set four, we're gonna add just a little thing. So you can pull that knee up, you're gonna tap the other knee with your heel and then you're gonna drop it down. It's kind of like it a jig. set four. So you come up, you tap, you come back slowly down. And all this is doing is elongating the amount of time that that leg is up off the floor, tr tricking ourselves into making that hamstring work just a little bit harder and just a little bit longer. 
At the end of set four, ladies, just FYI, you're going to come on up to standing, grabbing weights. Stop exercising. Very good. good. To the next Drop your station. hips slowly, and if you need to, take a quick moment, pull your knees into your chest, rock yourself right to left. Whew. Oh, that was a long time. All right, let's go ahead and grab those hand weights. We're gonna go into a standing row. Begin set one. So, you're gonna to have to take a big, wide A stance. A, just meaning that your legs are open. You're going to send your torso forward, elbows up, and squeeze your shoulder blades. Working that upper back, working that trapezius. Now, a couple things I want you to pay attention to. Your hips should be both pointing in the same direction. So no outward rotation of that hip. Chest is low, but it's nice and so open. Exercise. So you want to avoid any crouching or hunching. Go ahead and take your breaks on these. I'm going to go ahead and switch legs, but I'll face the other way so you can still pretty much see what I'm doing. Now. If you have one set of hand weights that feel a little bit too light, you can do a deeper row, meaning that you're sending your chest farther down toward the floor. Now, what this is going to do is essentially make gravity work against you slightly harder, so it's going to up the resistance. The other thing you can do to make this a little bit harder, pick up the pace. One, two. One, two. You squeeze your shoulder blades every time, and that is going to help improve your posture. We're sitting a lot during pandemic. Stop. There's a lot of hunching over computers. Three, two, one. Come on up, take a break, give me a little hip roll. <sighs> Feels good. All right, sets so three and four, same thing or optional. You can hold onto the hip in hand. Set three. Instead of sending one leg back, you're gonna send your tailbone back, soft knees, please. Let the arms come in front of you. Do your rows right here. Now, this is optional because it's challenging to maintain this pose. It can start to bother the lower back. So if you're trying this and your lower back is starting to feel it, I want you to pull your belly button in like crazy. Set your abs as if someone's gonna come and punch you right in the stomach. Got a little bit of violent imagery. Stop. Exercise. Good. Go ahead and hinge back up. Give me a little hip roll. Release the tension in your lower back. One more set, just like that. You know how to make it a little easier. You know how to make it a little harder. If you try this guy and eventually you, set you, know, you pull the belly button in and your back is just getting too tired, more than welcome to just send that leg back. But you can send your chest down. You can do that in your hinge too. You can go a little faster. Squeeze the shoulder blades a little harder. Connect your brain to the muscle group. The more you focus, the harder it's gonna feel. And that's good. You may not think it's good, but I do. Beautiful. Very, very good. Next up, ladies, we're gonna Stop do a set of wall push-ups. So go ahead and drive through those heels. Come on up, put your weights down for the time being. So, you're going to find a spot on the wall. Hopefully, the same spot will work for your wall sits. And we're going to begin with our hands against the wall. Now, I, of course, only have this pole to work with. So, you are welcome to have a wider hand. I'm going to end up doing, essentially, a tricep push-up here. So, you're going to step back, tuck your tailbone slightly, squeezing the glutes. Core is nice and tight. We're going to come down and up. Now, I'm going to kind of mime what it'll look like with different positions of the hands. You'll notice right now, I'm doing a very narrow push-up and my elbows essentially going straight down to the floor. This is a legitimate push-up, but it is a little bit more challenging. I'm just gonna lower my hands Stop. a touch. Exercise. There you go, that's better. Go ahead and take your breaks if you need to. Now, a wide push-up. Hands will be here and just come down and up. You'll notice that my elbows come out a little wider. And then you can also do Begin something in between. Two. You know, think a soft V. Essentially, all we want is to make sure that the elbows are always in line 
with the hands and the shoulders. So if your hands are narrow, you shouldn't be doing a froggy. Those elbows will drop. Beautiful. Now, if this feels kind of easy to you, you're just gonna pick up the pace. One, two, one, two. And you wanna make sure that you are one nice tight plank. So I don't wanna see any sagging, nor do I wanna see any cobras. You shouldn't be moving your body separately. Stop Stiff exercise. as a board. Good, go ahead and take that break. Now, if it still really doesn't feel like enough work for you, you can go ahead and do your push-ups on a countertop. We'll take you down a little lower on a bench or a chair or even the floor. You can always progress if you need Begin to. Begin set three. But I'm gonna show you a progression that can be done on the wall. So this is set three. I'm gonna have you come down. You're gonna hold. And then you're gonna pulse right here. So we have little teeny muscle contractions, but we're constantly working. When we come up, that's technically a break. Stay low. Keep that plank position, keep that core tight, keep those glutes squeezed. Shoulders are down, Stop. away from the ears. Very good, go ahead and take that break. Excellent. If that was too much for set four, go back to the full range of motion, all the way down, all the way up. But if that was a good challenge for you, you should definitely keep doing it. I'm gonna, just so you know, I'm right there with you. Four. All right, down, hold. And I want you to check on your back and your core. So make sure that you're not bowing. You wanna keep a little teeny tailbone tuck, belly button's pulled in, glutes are nice and squeezed. Drop your shoulders away from your ears and pulse. Very good. Now, a lot of times people attempt to get a deeper range of motion by sending their chest way forward and squishing their shoulder blades together. Now, we don't want to be rounded Stop through the shoulder blades. And switch to the next. We want a nice neutral upper back. Hold it for three, for two, for one. Whoo, go ahead and come all the way up. Excellent. We're going to continue our upper body series. Go ahead and grab your weights. Come on up to standing. All right. Set one. Begin set one. Bicep curls. <sighs> Beautiful. So I'm turning on a diagonal so you can see. You want to keep that core tight, knees soft, glutes lightly squeezed. One thing I see a lot is this. People send their elbows behind them. You want to make sure those elbows are squeezed into your sides. I also see a lot of this. Elbows rolling forward. Nope. Glue them. Glue them to your sides. Now, if you're one of those superstars that's like, I just feel like I haven't exercise. gotten enough work, go ahead and take this break, and we're going to add a progression. If your knees are healthy, you can follow along with me. If you have sensitive knees, you're just going to do your bicep curls one more time. Set two. We're going to be going into a reverse two. lunge with our bicep curl. We're going to take it nice and slow. One leg is going to go back. While you curl, drop that knee. Weight is in the front heel. Come up as you release and repeat on the other side. This takes balance, takes coordination, and you're going to take your time. Good. So you'll notice it's concurrent movement. As the leg goes down, the weights come up and vice versa. Let's do one more just to keep you even. Good. All right. Roll those shoulders back and down. Now, we're going to go into triceps because I have a short attention span. <laughs> You're going to place your palms behind you. Squeeze those glutes, squeeze that core, and pulse. Beautiful. So here, you should be feeling the work through the back of the shoulder, the top of the tricep. You'll notice I'm very slightly hinged forward here with a nice tight core. It's okay to be all the way up to standing, but one thing I see a lot is people kind of send their hips forward when they do that. I'd rather you kind of set your position in a small hinge. Stop exercise. Very good. Set four. 
If you have sensitive shoulders, you're going to stick with exactly what we were just doing. However, if your shoulders are healthy, we're going to try to try some overhead press. Good. So, I'm crossing the weight it's so that I can hold it easily in both hands all the way up. Weight drops behind the head, full extension. Very important that we keep a tight core here. No hyperextension of the lower back. Keeping those glutes lightly engaged and keeping the elbows parallel. So no flaring out. This is more challenging. If you find you can't get that range of motion, like your elbows are out here and you can't get them up by your ears, don't do it. Stop exercise and switch to the next station. Very nice. Hello, I'm doing Zoom. <laughs> we have Miss June that's come to say hello. All right, gonna lie down on your back. We're gonna finish up with some core work. So, <sighs> enjoy this for a hot second. Begin hands interlocked and placed behind your skull, please. We're gonna start with just very basic crunch. And don't worry, it's gonna get harder. So when we're doing a crunch, we wanna make sure that the lower back stays down. Even though our feet are on the floor, that doesn't mean that we have free license to just pop the lower back up. You wanna keep the belly button, pull it into the spine. And we're trying to get as much height as possible here. So I'm gonna turn slightly so you can see a little better. Keep that chin nice and open. As if you have a soft plum that you don't want to squish. Very good. Now you're going to keep your knees at 90 degrees. Set two, same thing. And notice I'm going on right through that break. Keep those elbows wide. Begin set two. Beautiful. So now we should start to feel the lower abs working. When the legs come up, again, we're engaging really hard to keep that lower back nice and flat. If your neck is getting tired, make sure that you're fully supporting your head, but don't worry, we're only gonna be doing these crunches till the end of this set. Ooh, abs are on fire. Now you notice the pace here, we're not going too slow, but it's a full range of motion. Stop, exercise. Beautiful, keep those knees at 90 degrees. If you need a little break, you can pull them into your chest. Arms at your sides, we're going to do little beats here. So now that we're no longer working the crunches, begin set three. Your upper abdominals are getting a little bit of a break, but not too much. It's very important that you keep squeezing the lowest rib to the hip, pulling that belly button in. Good. And if your lower back is tender, you can keep the range of motion really nice and small here. However, for step four, if you want that progression, all you gotta do is extend those legs a little bit longer, a little bit farther. Beautiful, keep that breath going. Gorgeous, lower back is down. Beautiful, making sure that that lower back does not come up off the mat. Full extension if you can. Push the back yes, more if your lower back is ready. Good. Very nice. We're nearly there, ladies. We just started set four. Can you get those legs a little lower? Very good. Now, if your lower back doesn't care for this, you don't have to keep doing that. You can do a short little range of motion until you give your lower back a little break, and then you approach again. You can always, always modify back down, even if it's just temporary. No progression I give you Stop is the life sentence. Three, your training is now two, complete. one. Woo, your, your training is now complete. Cardio area. So what I'm gonna have you do is drive through those heels. You're gonna pick your hips on up and you should feel just the slightest little stretch through those abs. It should feel really good. Slowly drop your hips back down. Roll to your side and come on up. Gorgeous work. I'm gonna come and say hi. Oh my goodness, look at all these people. Hi, Nicole. Hi. 